All right, everyone. Back to part four of our Resident Evil movie reviews. This is where Resident Evil movies are starting to get pretty painful to watch. I'm really, really kind of dreading the next two that I need to see after this, which, which I've never seen before. All the movies up to number four, the one we're reviewing today, I've all seen at least once. This one and the last one were the ones I only saw one time in the theater, but the other two, never seen before, and I'm really, really dreading it. So, <laughs> let's get into this. Uh, Resident Evil 4 Afterlife in 2010. Oh, man. The beginning of the movie. I'm just going to say it right now. The beginning of the movie was fucking awesome. It really, really was. Seeing all the different cloned Alice's take on Umbrella Headquarters and basically go toe-to-toe -to -toe and try to kill Albert Wesker and destroy Umbrella once and for all in Japan was really fucking cool. Uh, the slow motion, like I said, was stuff that would have made the Matrix fans proud all around the world, to be honest. Uh, and this is why I do say that the Alice character at this point is so strong and so completely overpowered that she could destroy Darth Vader and Neo from the Matrix, in my opinion. That's how crazy strong mentally, telepathically, and everything else she is at this point in the movie franchise. And then, this happens. Any last words? All those powers of yours? Speed, strength, accelerated healing? Well, you can kiss all those goodbye. <laughs> The serum I've injected you with is neutralizing the T-cells within your body. Put simply, the Umbrella Corporation is taking back its property. Hollywood giveth and take it away, just as fast. So now Alice is completely powerless. All this buildup from Resident Evil the first movie to Resident Evil 4 the fourth movie they just completely strip her of her powers after this completely awesome opening scene and kill off the dozens and dozens of clones that we saw at the ending scene of Resident Evil 3 Extinction. For some reason, all of them are dead somehow after this nuclear blast in the Japan headquarters that Albert Wesker did. So the plot of this movie Alice somehow, after having all of her powers, regenerative powers, strength powers, everything, survives this completely devastating helicopter crash that would kill anyone else, uh, is now looking for the survivors of Resident Evil 3, Extinction, Claire, and everyone else. Looking for a place called Arcadia. Something that they had heard as a survival place with no infection, completely safe, everything you've ever seen or heard in a zombie movie or show but ever before. There's always some place that broadcasts something like that and we all know how that ends up. They're either cannibals that want to kill people or they're fucking zombies and the place was overrun like a year before and the, the, the loop of the survival message just kept playing over and over again. So Alice is looking for these people. She finds them. She finds Claire and this is where I was like really starting to get annoyed because this is coming off of Resident Evil 5, mind you. And Resident Evil 5, for any of you who didn't know, I really, really hated. It is the worst game in the series up to that point. It really was. And something I was not expecting. I thought coming off of Resident Evil 4, the game, Resident Evil 5 was going to have something very cool to offer getting to finally play Chris Redfield again, 
that you haven't seen since Code Veronica, and God was I wrong. We were all wrong. <laughs> um, so, <sighs> Claire has the, the chest piece. Something stuck on her from Umbrella that if you played the game, and this is what really surprises me and makes me laugh on the inside, the people that made this movie took general audiences and what they may not know or know of Resident Evil and said, fuck it, we don't care anymore, and decided to throw really random things from the Resident Evil universe into this movie that if you were someone who never played Resident Evil before, never read a book, never read a comic book, never seen a game, anything, you would not know what in the holy God is going on here. You wouldn't know what the little chess piece control things are that Wesker had from the game. You wouldn't know what the giant monstrosity with the fucking ax hammer was walking over to the prison area to kill everyone. You wouldn't know what any of this stuff is or why zombies are sprouting tentacles out of their mouth. You, you wouldn't know what any of this shit is if you were just some random person going to see this zombie movie. So, <laughs> to me, I thought that was hilarious how they just did not care anymore. And this, just like Resident Evil Apocalypse, I felt like tried to mesh way too many stuff, way too much stuff in to one movie that was really like three different stories all together. Um, having Claire and Chris Redfield in this movie together, Claire not knowing who the fuck Chris is for half the movie, and Chris kind of just acting like a generic weird ass character. Like Chris did not act like Chris to me at all in this. He didn't have the personality of, of Chris Redfield from the video game. So that was confusing, especially because if you're general audience, you're not gonna know how fucking Chris Redfield acts. And obviously people that do know are gonna be like, why the fuck is Chris asking, as, acting like he's fucking high all the time? Like, I don't understand why he's acting like that. Alice, on the other hand, somehow being powerless like she is now, is still really badass enough to where she can take out zombies and fight just like how she was with her powers taken away. It was. That was what confused me the most I was, as I was watching this movie is if Alice's powers were all taken away, her super strength, her speed, her telepath telepathic abilities, why, why is she still able to do all this stuff that she's doing right now? Like, yeah, I get she was an umbrella operative, but like zombies and everything are still acting like they're just as affected by her punching and kicking them as they were when she did have power. So it was just really, really weird and kind of pointless, I guess, to have her powers taken away. So as Alice is looking for Arcadia, she discovers that she can't find it and ends up flying to Los Angeles where she runs into a random prison within the city. Now I've been to Los Angeles many times in my life and I know that there is not a giant fucking prison facility the size of the Empire State Building in the middle of the fucking city. <laughs> so it was just a little weird to see that, like why even base it in Los Angeles if you're gonna throw a random shit like that in there. And then Alice lands the plane on top of this place, of, of this prison facility, like it's escaped from New York and she's Snake Plissken all of a sudden. <sighs> And then zombies break into the prison and they get out to the prison and make it to the way to the ship that they see off the coast that's Arcadia. And the reason why I seem so lackluster when I'm talking about this plot is because it literally took so long. There's so much padding in this movie that it's it just throwaway stuff after throwaway after throwaway after throwaway. It's more random characters who you just meet, you're supposed to care about, the movie wants you to care about these people, but you don't ever get to know who they are. And when they do die, again, you're just like, oh well, I don't care. Much like Alien Resurrection or anything else, they're just like, oh well. And there's so much padding with just some random talking, people giving random stories that you don't give a shit about. And then, more fight scenes with Alice. That's really all this is at this point. The movie is finally degenerated 
to a point where it's all you're watching it for is to see Alice fight and kill zombies and monsters and to see the fight between her and Albert Wesker and and see the hopefully suspenseful and awesome tension filled scene of when Wesker comes face to face with Chris and and uh, Claire Redfield uh, because if you played the games you know that Wesker has had a colorful past with Chris and Claire from Code Veronica and the Resident Evil 1 and 2 and everything else you know that Wesker's had this giant past with them too so it was kind of uh, irritating to say the least to when they do finally meet up and there's no dialogue between Chris and Wesker at all or anything it's just a generic fight scene where yeah we knew Wesker was gonna kick everyone's ass because now he is completely mixed with the T-Virus he's got the eyes like we remember in Code Veronica where he's got like the hunter powers it appears you may be of some further use to me I'm going to let you live a little longer I'd be bringing a few friends. You should have brought more. He's super strong like Alice, moves super fast like the Matrix, and could probably beat the shit out of Neo also. Now, what really drove me nuts, and really, really, and that when I say this, really drove me nuts, was how disrespectful they were to Albert Wesker's character. I mean, basic Alice for me, like I said, Alice is a very cool character in these movies, but Alice is a character that never existed in Resident Evil, so I don't really have like a nostalgic feel for her or, or her character. She's just something from the movie that I like. But Wesker has been there from the beginning, and the way that they do Wesker in this movie, basically making him a Las Plagas monster from Resident Evil 4 or 5 at this point was just so stupid, just so dumb. And basically just about everything in this movie was dumb. You could definitely tell that the budget was increased to do more giant set pieces. I'm talking about giant explosions, giant uh, set pieces where the actors are on it. Like stuff that you would care about if the movie was actually good. <laughs> but you don't you don't you don't at all uh it it's almost like they stopped caring at this point they they really stopped caring at this point they cared you could tell that they stopped caring in resident evil 3 extinction but afterlife it was basically like opening a window and just throwing all the shit out of it and just being like hopefully they enjoy it i don't know if we wrote it well i don't know what the fuck's going on with alice I don't know what the fuck's going on with the T-Virus at this point. It's so weird because they go through all these movies up to the fourth one talking about the T-Virus, the zombies, to try to find a cure. Maybe they won't find a cure. More powerful monsters are coming out of this. Wesker's thrown in. And then all of a sudden, just basically scrap all of that. Scrap Alice's powers. Scrap the T-Virus. Now it's all about Las Plagas and the monsters from Resident Evil 5. So I bet basically all the stuff that you had seen in these movies is basically just wiped away. It's retconned. I mean, I don't I don't even know what to say at this point. I'm really, really nervous to see these next two Resident Evil movies. I know there's no way that they're gonna be good. There, there's no way they can be good. Can they? No, I don't think that they can be. On a scale of one to 10, this is definitely a three. Definitely a three. And you can see that there's obviously a trend with these movies. And this is why I stopped. This is where I officially stopped seeing Resident Evil movies in the theater. I was in college when this movie came out, and that is when I was finally like, I'm done. Coming off of Resident Evil 5, and now they're doing this with the movies, I'm done. I'm completely tapped out of paying my money to see these movies in the theaters and getting pissed off. Now, if I was smart back in 2010, I would have had a YouTube channel already, and I could have made a review about this movie back in the day, and I would have been 10 times more pissed off than I am now. 
because, you know, I was a lot younger then. <laughs> and a lot more pissed off then. But now, it's just like so disappointing and so like, just whoa, what the fuck. Now I want to watch the next two because I want to see how badly this fucking train wreck gets by this last movie that came out, what, like last year? So, yeah, guys, this is a little bit shorter because there's really nothing to say about Resident Evil Afterlife. Except that they basically redcon everything that you know from the first three movies up to this point. They, they do a little introduction of making sure they continue the story from the third one, how the third one ends. And then just completely erase it after that and basically Alice is a normal person and the T-Virus doesn't really even matter anymore at this point. I don't know where the fuck they're gonna go with the next two movies. It's gonna be interesting, and I might get a little more pissed off at those two because I'm gonna have to actually pay money to rent those because they're not free on Netflix, so... Fuck. <laughs> anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe. This is Forrest from Retro or Die. And I will see you on the next Resident Evil movie review.